Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Anirudh and today's video is about climate change. Or rather, is it too late to stop climate change? Let's get right into the video. Climate change. First of all, let's discuss what we'll be learning in this video. We will discuss as to what is climate change and what are its causes. Then we will find out the answer for why can't we just stop emitting these greenhouse gases. Then we will learn about the factors of climate change with some solutions to it. Climate change. Climate change includes both global warming driven by human induced emissions of greenhouse gases and the resulting large scale shift in weather patterns. Though there have been previous periods of climatic changes caused by natural factors, since the mid 20th century, humans have had an unprecedented impact on Earth's climatic system and caused change on a global scale. The causes of climate change. Human activity is the main cause of climate change. People burn fossil fuels and convert land from forests to agriculture. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, people have burned more and more fossil fuels and changed vast areas of land from forests to farmland. Why can't we just stop emitting these greenhouse gases? It is not realistically possible to stop all our coal, fuel and natural gas power plants because our economies are very much dependent on power. Even if we were to shut down these power plants overnight, this would throw our society into chaos and we would have to return to the pre-industrial era. Let's discuss as to what are the factors of climate change. There are two main factors of climate change. They are population size and economic growth. Population size. People require basic amenities like food, shelter, clothing, etc. All these services directly or indirectly add to our carbon footprint. For example, let's consider a service like electricity. Electricity is mostly produced by coal and natural gas power plants, which directly add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. More population means more goods and services, and more goods and services means a higher carbon footprint. This is a simple equation. Economic growth. The richer people get, the more carbon dioxide they produce. An average person in the US has a carbon footprint equal to 40 to 50 farmers in Uganda. Though economic growth isn't distributed equally, it has led to the highest per capita income and the highest reduction in extreme poverty ratio. The United Nations estimates that the growing population will level off at 11 billion in 2100. The only way to slow this is to make healthcare, contraception and education more and more available. Economic growth has become the main objective of every country. More and more people will experience economic growth, that is, getting richer, and higher and higher will be their carbon dioxide emissions, because getting richer means getting more services. Now, let's discuss as to what we can do, or rather, what the governments of the world can do to prevent climate change. There are two main factors for reducing climate change or global warming. They are energy intensity or energy efficiency and ener emissions per energy unit. Let's get to the first factor that is energy intensity. It describes how efficiently we use energy. If an appliance is more efficient, then we require less energy to do something. For example, a street vendor in India might use coal to make food, but a street vendor in Italy might use an electric heater, which is a lot more energy efficient. Hence, making our society more and more energy efficient is one of the most important ways to reduce the dependency on carbon dioxide emissions. Examples of increasing efficiency are using artificial intelligence, electrifying more and more sectors, sustainable concrete production. The list goes on. Let's discuss some setbacks of this factor. The first one, direct rebound effect. Once an appliance becomes more and more efficient, it is used a lot more and hence the overall reduction in consumption isn't that profound. An example, when planes became more fuel efficient and costs of tickets went down, more and more people started using them. Indirect rebound effect. When we save money because of a more efficient appliance, we tend to use that money on something else. You might use the money saved on a fuel efficient car on a different vacation. The third factor is less return on investment. If you already are efficient at a task, it becomes more and more tough to become more efficient at that task, and hence the return on investment slows down. 
efficiency and setback even if we are very efficient at all our tasks our activities will still create some amount of carbon dioxide hence efficiency alone isn't enough to create a zero carbon economy this brings us to our final factor emissions per energy unit emissions per energy unit coal plants have a lot higher carbon footprint as compared to solar or wind alternatives the more fossil fuels we burn the higher our carbon dioxide output there are three things that we must do to transition away from fossil fuels use leverage we have today with our current technology invent better technologies and take better action use leverage we have today with our current technology we must leave nuclear power plant online longer and also build newer ones possibly even fusion reactors we must cut subsidies to the fossil fuel industry and give them to the renewable industry we must price carbon emissions harshly and increase the price regularly to create a strong incentive to move to renewable we must enforce very strict standards for energy efficiency and for any type of construction we must phase out old fossil fuel vehicles and build more that run on electricity innovation we must innovate better and newer technologies like carbon capture bigger and efficient batteries better nuclear reactors possibly fusion reactors hydrogen powered vehicles quantum and supercomputers to assess our current situation the list is endless but innovation takes time and we don't have enough time hence the third thing we need to do is take action the less fossil fuels we burn and the less co2 we release in the next few decades the more time we give innovation to catch up the more fossil fuel alternatives we use today the more we can compensate for population and economic growth neither of the options alone can save us from climate change but innovation and action along with a decisive move away from fossil fuels can help us in recovering from it solving climate change is and will be complicated we have to take into account the needs of billions of people and also today's society is very dependent on fossil fuels this will not change with the blink of an eye but it needs to change as soon as possible and it is even to this day very much possible let's end this video with a quote there's one issue that will define the contours of the century more dramatically than any other and that is the urgent threat of a changing climate barack obama thank you very much guys for watching this video please like this video comment down below and subscribe to my channel for more fascinating content bye